Hello, beautiful alchemist. Welcome to Reiki Radio. I am your host, Yolanda, and today we have an amazing episode with Cla Claudia, ooh, tongue tied already, <laughs> Claudia Torres of Our Mindful Kids. So a lot of us um, are very curious within this realm, of course, of how to share, you know, these different mindfulness techniques with the younger generations. I remember years ago seeing an article about a school in Baltimore actually implementing mindfulness training into their schools, and they noticed um, a reduction in behavior issues. Um, there was a reduction in instead of going to detention, the children were instead put into um, meditation circles. And there was just overall improvement in how the children were processing their own emotions and their function. And I believe they saw improvement in grades. It was, it was amazing what the effects were. But I know that in the Reiki community, there are several people who also share uh, Reiki practices with young people, with youth. And um, there is more of that that is expanding. I've even heard of uh, people trying to implement Reiki very specifically uh, into different school systems. But today you will meet Claudia Torres and she provides training for children. And again, her company is called Our Mindful Kids. You can learn more about her work at OurMindfulKids.com. And what we talk about today, of course, is why mindfulness even matters, how it can be supportive for younger people, but also how it supports people in parenting. So I'm sure that some of you listening already have direct experience with this. Um, you may have noticed that your own parenting or just interaction period with people has changed because of your own mindfulness um, practice and awareness. But Helping children to build relationships with mind, body, and heart uh, really does help to improve mental health, and that is what Claudia focuses on. So you will learn a lot from her today. If this is something you have been curious about, if it is something that you're already working with, you may be inspired with what it is that she shares. So again, don't forget, you can learn more about her and her work. She has an online mindfulness school and her website is OurMindfulKids.com. She also has a podcast called Presently Aki with Claudia. And I was a guest on her podcast. So if you want to uh, learn more, again, not just about her work, but other uh, practitioners that she interviews, be sure to check out her podcast called Presently Aki with Claudia and check out the interview there. I had a lovely time chatting with her about Reiki, of course. So um, aside from the interview, I just wanted to let you all know, especially if you're new to the community, there are uh, a lot of different offerings, even some free downloads and content that I provide that can support you in your path of energetic alchemy. So one of the things is right now, or when the show is over, be sure to go to my website, theenergeticalchemist.com, sign up for my newsletter, and you will get free access right away to creating with the moon and stars, as well as 22 days of transformation. And both of those will support you again in your path of energetic alchemy and your own mindfulness. I also have an app now, the Energetic Alchemist app, which you can download through the Apple Store or through Google Play for Androids. And through the app, there is a lot of content there for you. There are Reiki tools, alchemy tools, guided meditation journeys. I do daily readings by sign um, using my deck, the Energetic Alchemist Oracle deck. So yeah, there's a lot of content to support you on your path. You can learn more about all of it on my website, theenergeticalchemist.com. There's also an upcoming class. I ask. I get asked a lot if I am doing any live classes coming up because there are plenty of classes that you can access now on demand. Um, however, I am doing a live virtual three-day class, August 25th through 27th. 
and it's called the Ultimate Healing Guide. And you can get more information about that and register Save Your Seat through my website as well. So that is it for now, beautiful alchemist. I hope that you enjoy this episode and I will see you on the other side. Okay, everyone, welcome to today's episode. We are here with the beautiful Claudia Torres. Um, before we start, Claudia, I just want to say thank you for coming to take the time. It was very exciting to be interviewed by you, and I'm thrilled that I get to hear about your work today. Oh, I'm, I'm honored to be on your podcast. It's nice. It's refreshing to always be on the other side of that end, right? Yeah. So I understand. But excited to see you again more than anything. Yeah. Yes. Yes. yes yeah it's easy when you just have like that vibe easy clicking with someone yeah so it, really I was looking forward to this but in looking over your work and your sites as I was telling you before we recorded I was like wow I can't wait to hear more about what it is that you're doing and sharing in the world because this mindfulness for children and you have a beautiful um, online school that really focuses on our mindful kids and that's the website itself and we're going to get into that but I have to ask you first of course what even got you interested in mindfulness on your personal path what brought you into these practices and meditation yoga everything yeah um so mindfulness was a, a natural inclination in my my own being I was already in this space from a little girl and I didn't know, right? I didn't know what mindfulness was, what being in so hyper aware meant. And also being from New York City, it, it's a part of you being hyper aware because you have to watch yourself, right? All the time. I also worked in high luxury uh, hospitality for a very long time. And that process, you have to manage expectations. So I have to, you know, be three steps ahead of you. So what ended up happening with that is I learned a lot about human behavior and I was just in love with that. I'm like, oh, there's a pattern to people. There's a pattern to things. Um, but the first time I realized what, um, what I was embodying or what I already was uh, knowing was the first time I ever stepped a foot into yoga and I was in my mid twenties and I met myself for the first time and I had the most amazing yoga teacher and I praise him I wish I'd remember his name because it's so long ago um, but he taught me meditation and made and helped me understand you know the 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 communication and the relationship of the mind body soul in such a way that I you know growing up Catholic we don't have that so um, but I was already anti all of those things from teenager so mm -hmm coming into a space where I felt my full self and I didn't know what that meant. It was a gift that I didn't know was waiting for me. So um, being in the space for so long, you know, reading amazing books that helped me understand more about how I work and why I was seeing the world so differently than most people um, helped me a lot. But it's funny because I didn't know what, again, even until my 30s until I moved to Los Angeles and I found a mindfulness research center here at UCLA and so I went on the website and I found my mentor on there and she has her own classes outside of the school and so I took some of her private classes just to see where I was in mindfulness like am I really in this space or or is this something else right just to understand myself further and so that's kind of what I did. And once I took some classes and joined her Sangha, which is a community, um, I was I was on point. I was well writing that mindfulness journey. Um, and I was really surprised by that. Um, and this, again, I'm just learning about me. I still am not planning uh, um, to be a teacher or have a podcast. I was still right. not in, in that um, in the ether of me, like planning things because I've been a singer for over 20 years and I thought that uh -huh. was going to be my, I'm going to be a singer or start a um, consulting hospitality company because I was so good at it as well. Um, and so those are my ideas for my future, right? And uh, as, as coming here and evolving so much, I've been here almost six years, it's helped me unravel 
expand in ways that I never knew, but I also had a feeling when I left New York, I'm like, something's going to change me in a way that I've been craving for. Right. Um, so that's kind of how the journey led it was just that yoga and having yoga always that off and on relationship with it and meditation as well. And um, just having, I guess, more of the initiative to understand myself deeper is how I got to that mindfulness space. Yeah, no, it's really interesting. So there's two things I want to ask you. But the first one being, because a lot of people come into this work because of some kind of like personal eruption, something throws them off. But it's really interesting hearing how you were so observant of people and starting to really notice like the behaviors and the patterns. And so I'm curious, in that time, even before you started with the yoga and everything, was there anything that fascinated you about us? Like, what motivated us to, you know, choose one thing over the other? Or what is it that you noticed? Just that the that? body speaks louder than you. Wow. Okay. Your body will tell me the truth. Yes. That is one thing that I was blown away as I kept working in hospitality. And mostly I worked in uh, luxury hotels in New York City. Mm-hmm. And as learning and watching because well in the beginning it the process is like when is your birthday when is your anniversary you know so that's one pattern right because you have a birthday every year so like certain obvious patterns but then um when you get into a higher brand like the plaza in new york where i worked i have to know like when you arrive what you expect your room to look like when you when it's a certain season or when it's a certain something like i already have to like be so ahead of that um but the body it was uh, is what really took me by surprise because I'm I'm listening to you and also I didn't know about being an empath and yes. and feeling your energy I didn't know I was doing that so as I'm listening to you and your energy is giving something off so I start watching your body and I'm like oh I see this person's nervous this person's insecure mm-hmm. this person lying or I can tell that they're overwhelmed by happiness um, and they're sincere right so yeah. that bodies <laughs> i have to ask you too claudia in that it's just I, this is fascinating and i, I promise you i'm going to get to the next question yeah. but yeah. it with that observation mixed with what you were able to feel did it seem like could you tell even when people were like trying to intentionally like hold back mm-hmm. certain projections or feelings like did you notice certain patterns in the body when we were trying to hide perhaps mm-hmm rather than just like truly letting you see right. who yes. we are. So fascinating enough, what you're trying to hide is your authentic self. Mm-hmm. That's the aspect I have chills right now because that's what I would notice. I'm like, oh, why isn't that person? I can tell that they wanted to speak their truth, but in that moment they felt intimidated or whatever, something held them back. And yeah. so something else came out. And so that was really strange to see because I also didn't know how I can tell this person what I see and know, right? Like, because I didn't know myself what I was naturally being um, privy to as I'm observing you. And so, yeah, I would say that that's a big one is that people really hold back their authentic truth. And um, it it took a while to understand and like accept and learn to hold my tongue because there was no words that I could explain to you and say, Hey, when you were talking to this person at the cashier at the supermarket, you really wanted to say, hey, you charged me an extra dollar, but Mm -hmm. you felt guilty. And so you just decided to go with it. And I said, why did you do that? Like, I want to know because I'm curious. (laughs) Why did you feel the need to hold back your true self? And so, um, you know, that that is giving me a different idea of like, wow, in a different world when we're feeling more vulnerable and open to receiving when someone is like hey I can see you wanted to be your true self and it's okay to do that you know next time not this time no shame just understanding right yeah it's interesting what you're saying because I think a lot of times when we hear mindfulness it it there's a lot of different thoughts that come into play and that's actually what I want to ask you so for people listening they're sometimes it's like one of those words we hear it so much and we don't consider what it really means or we all just may have different interpretations of what that is so I would love to know just from your perspective what mindfulness means and then how it shows up in our lives like Mm -hmm. 
even if you told someone, oh, you should be more mindful, but okay, but why, <laughs> right? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Beautiful question. Uh, mindfulness to me is a practice of being fully present in the now. And it doesn't necessarily mean for you to stop your thoughts, um, to never think about the past or the future. It's just take them into consideration into the now, right? Versus getting lost in the thoughts of the past and the future. It's more like, okay, I, uh, cause sometimes, you know, we get overwhelmed by emotion, right? If we had gone through, you know, someone had passed away, which is such deep grief, right? And there is no timing on when you will heal. And by applying mindfulness to that aspect, which is a deep, deep grief, cause even heartbreak when we're, we we'll break up with relationships or get divorced. Those, those are grieving moments or even breaking up friendships for so long. You can still have grief for the time that you spent together. And, you know, so I, I love the practice of mindfulness because it allows you to understand that you're here now. Where are you right now? Are you, are you healthy? Are you, are you in, in, in your home? Right. Like kind of, it's like mindfulness and gratitude at the same time not saying like be grateful because I don't like that like be grateful like forcing you to be grateful <laughs> yeah. for what you have it's just more like be aware that you have your health that you your kitchen your fridge is full right you have a home you have people that you love and yes I may feel deep grief right now and that's okay and I'm just gonna allow it to go through me understanding that it's not the end of the world because yeah. I do have all those beautiful things and I am whatever else you may have your children, your companion or whatever else. It's just taking, using it. And, and that's what the body is so important because the body is always in the present moment. So for those that are unaware, that's the magic. The body right. is always in the present moment. It's just our mind that is everywhere at once. Yeah. And so by practicing mindfulness, it'll always bring you back to the now, which is you you being here in that eternal now, which is the infiniteness of space, right? That's in the deep end of mindfulness. But to be mindfulness and practicing in your everyday, it's just simply like when I teach the kids, it's just paying attention, being here. Like when you get lost and overwhelmed in a thought, like at work, it's just stop, mm -hmm. just stop, pay attention. Like, oh wait, I'm, I'm allowing the thoughts of, my boss upsetting me, like ruin my entire day. No, she, that person doesn't deserve for you to ruin your entire day. You're in charge. So it's like remembering that you are the boss, the, you know? And when I say you're the boss, I mean your heart. Your heart is the master of the mind. You know, we all yeah. think that the mind is the master, but it is not. That's what mindfulness is so important because what ends up happening is that you start to see the patterns and the behaviors of your own mind. And then once you start to see, because that's the first step is being aware, paying attention and catching yourself. Like, when do I let my day falter because one person said something? I've, I've given my power away to somebody and not realizing that I have the power within myself to bring back myself to present, to joy, to gratitude, right? Yeah. So it's just, it's, and I always tell people, like, when you start practicing mindfulness, definitely practice grace because we will falter. We're no, no one's perfect. I've been practicing mindfulness for most of my life, but I'm human. I'm going to falter, right? Things are going to happen. You know, it's just life, but it is about having the tools when these things arrive and understanding to giving yourself grace. And so when, when, you know, when you go back on the up, right? Cause we're always on the wave, right? When we're on the down, it's really hard to see things clearly, but when we start going up on the rise, now you have mindfulness to understand and have self-reflection and introspection to what actually happened. What was the lessons? How did I participate in that? What can I take away? So now you're just collecting gems from these experiences right. versus, versus you being the victim of these experiences. And so that's, slowly and gradual as you know you go through your day and I tell people I'm like you know with meditation um, meditation is about being in the present moment so if you're a gardener if you love to cook like fully be there and then catch yourself when your mind starts thinking about tomorrow right and just bring it back it's just about bringing it back and the secret to all of this is the breath and that's why I say like the body will always remember so your body just always to bring it back to a deep breath. And I always suggest three deep breaths 
um, to bring you back, whether it's a, a negative space or a positive space, or when your thoughts are going rampant, just take those three deep breaths and you come back. So if I'm cooking, I take those three deep breaths because I'm thinking about tomorrow. I'm like, oh, that's right. Look, look what I'm doing here. And then what ends up happening is that you're going to put, you're so present and in that gratitude loving space you're putting that into your food and now you're going to digest that beautiful space as well yeah no it's beautiful it's interesting there's so many things that came up with what you said and we are going to get to the kids because this is a topic that a lot of people have mm -hmm. so much curiosity around how to support um the youth but with what you said it reminds me so much of the importance of direction of mind and how when you tell someone that like have an awareness just observe yourself i think we think we're doing that but mm -hmm. once you really start to consciously click into exactly what you said yes. what helped me is what you said was having an awareness of my body so it was this this connection between i started to consciously recognize what's going through my head and how's my body responding to it so then it was this dance of like oh i'm feeling aggravated i'm feeling blah and then I would think like, okay, well, what's on your mind, right? So this beautiful yes. dance between the two. Yes. Um, but I love that you mentioned too, the breath, because that is so, it's crazy how much that can shift. Mm -hmm. Again, like slow down the mind, slow down the body and bring us into a space of grace, as you say. But before we get into the kids, Claudia, I have to ask you about this as well, because with what you're saying, a lot of people either deepened their practice or came into recognizing a need for this type of work during the pandemic. And during that time, you were inspired to start a YouTube channel and really create a space for community. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to know if you could talk a little bit about that, where that inspiration came from and what was the community about? For sure. Um, so 2020, we all know, uh, I got laid off as most people did. Uh, for me, it was so different. I was happy. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love being home and I love myself. So yes, I'll be home. <laughs> no problem. Um, but I started watching uh, a lot of the people that I was um, acquaintances with doing webinars. Mm -hmm. And and I thought, well, I have great people skills. It'd be cool to be a moderator for someone. And sure enough, a week later, uh, this beautiful Latin organization called the Latinista, which is an organization for women, um, asked me to moderate their webinars. Wow. And so I got practice. And as, again, the observer and understanding what's going on, I realized, wait, everybody's not having a, such an easy time staying home as I am. And I'm enjoying this, but this is the first time people are getting to be home with their thoughts, their choices, the life that that maybe they didn't realize they're just rolling through the river and just like, this is where I led. And I didn't even pay attention or had a, a, a conscious thought to say no or yes, right? And so I immediately decided to reach out to some of the people I already knew in the wellness community and ask them to come on to my new YouTube channel. I have this idea where we get around and we pick a topic and we'll discuss mental health in a way, whatever that may show up as. And so I started in October, 2020. And every month, it would be once a month, I would have two to three people on there. It was a nice little group. And then by June of 21, I had uh, a friend in the, um, he's an angel investor, so to say, saw that I was so passionate about what I was doing and helping other people with their mental health that he invested in a podcasting class for me. Wow. And so from there, it, it transitioned into this podcast. So it was now a one-on-one, -on -one, right? So when that happened and I took the class, I sat with myself and asked spirit, spirit, what do you want me to, what messages or what is it that you want me to do with this idea, right? Because I had this idea, now it's transforming into this, but what should I ask people, right? And now it's a one-on-one -on -one versus a topic. And so that's how it transformed into asking people about themselves, right? Asking them about their difficulties of their journey 
to get to self-discovery and get to heal themselves? How, do, how did you do this? Right? right. And so those three questions that I, I've asked you on my podcast, that's how it, it came. Like spirit was like, this is what's important because people need to hear that that person that is your healer went through stuff that you're going through. It's not like they woke up and what became this. They went through their struggles and this is what they, how they overcame and persevered. And so it's that inspirational arc of stories that come through. And so um, over a year of doing this, I'm just blown away of the stories that I've heard thus far. So I had a woman on there. She has a spirit camp in Maine and she teaches children about their spirit. She teaches about their chakras, about their, co their connection to Gaia, to nature. And so she, she just, just delight to interview. And we had a beautiful connection like we did and talked about, I also taught kids yoga in my past life in New York. And so she had asked me, would you want to teach mindfulness at my school online? And I was like, what? That was, I, I, what? Like, it was so surreal. And immediately I was like, yeah, of course, of course, of course, like that's unexpected and I'll do that. So uh, I taught at her school for a few months and then this year I decided to start my own school and it's an online school for the kids. And so I teach on Saturdays um, and then I teach them mindfulness. But the beautiful thing with the children that took me by surprise was that they already are in the space. I don't really have to teach them. They are my teacher because they already know. I'm just giving them the words, how to use the tool that already exists within them and to cultivate it and nourish it through time. And okay. so, right? Yes. No, I, I just, I, cause I really want to ask you this yeah. um, for so many reasons, but it's, it's interesting. First of all, I want everyone to know your beautiful podcast is called Presently Aki with Claudia and you can listen on podcast platforms or go to YouTube and still presently at key with Claudia. Um, and it's interesting to hear that you were like, you know, I asked spirit, what do you want me to do with this? And you follow that inspiration. And then this beautiful alignment comes where you're invited to um, do just probably something you weren't even considering. Yeah. And before we go into the mind on mindfulness school, because I really want to talk about this. I think a lot of people would love to enroll their children. Could you talk a little bit about why this is important for the kids? Because some of us may be oblivious to, we don't even realize. I think we look at kids and we think like, oh, they're kids. They're happy. They're, they're not concerned with stress or worry. They're too young. Mm -hmm. How has this really been impactful for children? Why is it necessary? Yes. Thank you for asking. That's uh, very important. Um, so what I'm doing when I teach them I tell them, they ask me and I, I, I give such a safe space and they're very vocal and they don't hold back. And <laughs> I tell them like, this class is about you. And they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, this is about you. We're going to learn about you. So they're already like, oh, okay. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> you know? So yeah. we go into it and then we start learning about the emotions, right? What are emotions? Where do they come from? Where does the mind, what is the heart, you know? And so, and again, mindfulness is paying attention. So the importance of all these teachings and getting to know yourself, and this is children or adults, it is that aspect, getting to know yourself. A lot of us do not know ourselves because we weren't taught or had the awareness that that was important to know who we are so we can make better decisions for ourselves and our lives, right? And also not allowing the emotions and the thoughts control us, which is what happens, which is, you know, not to bring violence in, but violence is uncontrolled emotional intelligence. It's not an unchecked emotional intelligence. So when you don't have that, these are the things that happen. You're unchecked. So you end up doing things that aren't your number one choice, right? You end up being, you end up doing negative things is where I'm going with this you end up doing negative things that you're going to regret and you're going to resent yourself for later. But instead I'm giving you a tool where you can take it back before you jump at it, not to be reactive 
and be proactive in that moment. That's why the present moment is so important because it's there giving you this gift and opportunity to think like, is, is these the words I want to use? Is this the action I want to do? The behavior? Is this how I, I pro, like, is this the way that I exemplify who I am? from my heart space. Like, is this who I truly am by doing these things to other, hurting other people, you know? And I always talk about that because I know that all of us inside are like, no, I don't wanna hurt people. But when we're not the masters of our mind and our emotions, then they overtake that moment. You mm -hmm. know, like we've had heated arguments, right? And you say things you regret because you're not being present. You're just allowing the thoughts and the emotions overtake you versus you being in charge. So. The importance of all this is for you to be in charge. And obviously for me is having a kinder world, having a kinder space and a loving space for all of us, because, you know, we're all coming from a traumatic childhood for most of us. Some of us are lucky enough to, but trauma does not escape you, right? It just, yeah. it just, it's just part of life. But instead of being again, the victim, then you can take it and learn from it. And this is why a lot of healers are able to share this because they understand that their experiences was not only for them to learn, but to share because their other people are going through the same things, right? Mm -hmm. So we can take it back. So it's just more of like, okay, I'm about to say something nasty to the person who just upset me, who cut me off on the highway. And instead of me running rampant from that anger, take those three deep breaths. Is this what I really want to do? I understand that I'm angry because what this person did, but it's not personal. It's the right. key. It isn't personal. They could be having their own day as well. So do you want to add on to more of that negativity in the space of the world? Or do you want to take it back and give yourself a chance and not let the, you know, let, let your power go out from someone who you don't even know and will never run into again, you know? So I hope that it's so interesting. No, it does. And I, I, as you talk, I just have more questions for you, right? <laughs> so I know that you work with kids from the ages of seven to 12, which I imagine must be so fascinating because kids in of themselves, I mean, they're just, their minds are so brilliant. Um, <laughs> I can't imagine what that would be like. But I want to know, so first of all, for people listening, um, in the classes, are, are they separated by age or is it that that's the collective of the group they can come between seven and 12. But then also, what are the elements that you do very specifically help the children with? Is it meditation? Is it breath work, observation? Like what comes into supporting sure. them? Sure. So the classes are actually one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, okay. Just, you have my, my full attention for 30 minutes. Nice. And, um, you know, what I'm teaching them is that they have choice. You have a choice if you're not having a good day. We don't have to, I, I, because I'm an energy reader, right? I can feel into what they're going through. So if yeah. that day they're not feeling themselves, I allow to give them space. Like, it's okay. We don't have to do today's class. If anything, you know what? Do you want to draw? Let's draw out our emotions, right? So it's just giving them a different tool without them knowing like, oh, she's still teaching me, yes. right? And so, and meditation, because there are a plethora of, varieties of meditation it's never forcing them to sit there with their eyes closed i have movement meditations definitely breath work is always a part of it um because they're overwhelmed by these emotions because they're new people they're new humans so it's like <laughs> oh, what, are, what do i do when i'm so angry or when i'm so happy and i get overly excited right so it's just teaching them how to focus that energy into something more productive right so I do do art and I do different types of meditation I even do running in place or um, how to release anger in your body right because we hold it and we become so tight so one is just like tightening your body on purpose your entire body just tight tight as much as you can mm -hmm. and let it go so we do it like three times and then you you're, you'll start to see because your your body from the reaction of anger or anxiety is already in a tight space so let's make it tighter and release it so the body is giving it permission like oh i don't have to hold it because i'm vocalizing and i'm expressing and so i also give them permission to understand like when you are having certain emotions or thoughts tell your parents tell your teacher vocalize 
practice these things. Do not internalize, but they don't know the word, but it's just like, don't hold it in because it's going to build up into a big emotion. And then mm-hmm. you're not going to be in a better space. So as you tackle it now versus later, then you don't have to think about this. It's already, it happened. You said it and you can move on. Now you can go watch a movie. Now you can go play or, <laughs> You know, and understanding to when they get punished, right? I've had kids when they're punished and allowed to play video games. And it's just helping them understand because they tell me, right? They tell me everything. So I'm like, <laughs> why, do you, why do you think you're punished, right? So I'll go into investigation. I always have a curriculum for my day. But what they're needing at that moment is more important than I'm, what I want to teach. Right. So, so they understand that not every time we meet, it's going to be the same. Like, I don't expect you to be like I'm you know, no offense, public schools, um, but all offense. Um, and so it's just like you, you, you're you just a human with multidimensionality with so much going on at the same time, impossible for me to force you to do stuff, especially when it comes to yourself. So it's just letting them know that it's okay to feel however they're feeling that day. And let's go with that as a lesson versus like, oh, I'm sorry, you're feeling sad. I don't do that. Yeah. I don't think, oh, well, well, maybe we can, I'm giving into what's happening versus I'll flip it and make it a lesson. Yeah, that is so beautiful. There's a couple of things. One, I love that you acknowledge, like, they're new humans. Like, hello. Yeah, <laughs> they don't humans. know. Just trying to figure this out. But I, I think about, too, how impactful that has to be. I mean, you know, because we've all been there. We've all been young people. And so to, I can't even imagine what it would have been like one first of all for you to even create the space for the kids for them to feel safe to just Mm -hmm. be truly authentically them without risk of being in trouble and like how nourishing that has to be for them to have a safe space Mm -hmm. um just to be seen and heard but then also that acknowledgement of like yeah if we hold that space and acknowledge what they're going through and give them the tools early on yeah, they would struggle so much less through, so you know, nice. yeah, as you know, we've so, all bumped against. Right. And hating themselves, shaming themselves. It's right. Like, oh, this is why. And it's okay when this happens. It's okay. Yes. If I, it's, it's just giving the permission. Like, it's okay that we're not perfect today. Right. Yeah. And so as they get older, they won't be, A, allowing people to tell them who to be. Right. And then berating themselves over mistakes because I see mistakes as um, kind of like Hollywood a missed take you mistook uh-huh. that moment now you can redo it because now you just learned it so it's not mistakes are gifts so it's just yeah. it takes time but they're in that perfect space where they're grasping it and and it's mind-blowing <laughs> yes yeah I'm so curious too so two parts like one do you ever have a kid come back and tell you excitedly, like, hey, Miss Claudia, I used my breath today, or <laughs> do they recognize, you yes. know, even walking away with the tools, but then also with the parents, do you have to have conversations with them? Are they aware of the curriculum to where they would know, like, perhaps telling their child or supporting their child with, like, oh, perhaps in this moment, let's breathe together, or this type of thing? Yes. So um, definitely they come back because they get so excited. Um, I had one student who would write affirmations in a little cup so she could just pull one out in the morning and (laughs) tell me about that and the journaling. Oh, my God, I journal, but I never asked them to share. Never. That's, I just want you to be able to do that. So they tell me that in the breath work, like I was at school today and so-and-so happened and I did this and it really helped me because I would have done something else right Right. so it's like oh my god this is beautiful um with the parents it's a mixed bag some parents are very informed on mindfulness and that's why they want their kids to learn some parents don't know what mindfulness is but so they're not involved in the class Mm -hmm. um i always encourage so prior to the class i always email the parent of the entire eight-week curriculum of what's going to happen. Um, and I also offer continued education because I have students that I've had for months and months at a time. So I, I have, I mean, mindfulness is an eternal space. Like I can talk about it for lifetimes. Right. So 
it's just because they're in such a beginning space, I can, it could be forever. So um, with the parents, I try to incorporate them. And so what I do is email the parent the meditation of the day, right? This is what we practice and encouraging the parent to involve themselves, right? And why, why this is also helpful to them, not only to their child, right? And so funny enough, that sat with me for a while because some parents weren't involving themselves in the class. And, you know, it's important for the child to continue practicing mindfulness and meditation in their day at home because I'm not home with them only 30 minutes uh, a week. And so what I'm actually um, in the middle of creating an adult. So this is my idea. I'm creating a prerequisite class for the parents to take yeah. on mindfulness when they're done, then I can offer them a family mindfulness class. So the reason for the prerequisite class is because the child will always be the advanced student. It doesn't matter if they never heard of my med meditation or mindfulness, the kids are already in this space. Mm -hmm. so, but the parent isn't, right? Because we've lived life, we're jaded, we're all up in our thoughts and our feelings, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And that's okay. So it's just helping you understand what that is, why it's important, and why I'm doing this because your child is already there and they, they would love for you to have you there so they can be seen and heard by you, right? right? So by having the mindfulness, the family workshop, then together they can have that because the child really loves it and they want to share it with their parents. But if the, the parent isn't engaged or having the understanding, it's kind of like being brushed off when they're so excited to learn, like, oh, I've been doing this for so long. I just didn't know what it meant. I didn't know that some kids are already naturally meditating. Some kids yes. are already having understanding what stress is and what, what they don't like, what they do like, right? They already know. That's why I teach that group because that's when they start to coming into their personality, right? And so that's important for them. And so I really encourage parents to join, um, you know, even if it's just for the student, for the sorry, for the child, it's just to be there, to be a part of the video, to be there and understand and also hear back from you and, and say like, thank you, or, or maybe you didn't like it, or I, I'm open to all of it. So I uh, really encourage parents to get to know more about this space because it is helpful for the entire family. So that way we're not also creating a trauma pattern in the home, right? Mm -hmm. We're always arguing or we're always gaslighting and always so many things, right? Yeah. To have a healthier, happy space at home um, when we can, like the option is there. We don't have to traditionally continue the loops of our, the generations before us. That's a very, I think, so important because as you're saying it, I'm thinking of how many people grew up in the in the space of being a child but having to act as the adult, where a lot of times people are put in a position where they may have to be more mature in a lot of ways than the adults in the home in this type of thing. And if you had a child who understood how to be in relationship with themselves, but you have a parent who still you know, acting out from emotion and not being mindful, it yeah. could have that effect of like the child feeling like, oh God, like who, where's my guidance, right? Where's that was me. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. where I, that's is why I teach it. Cause I was yeah. the parent of the family. I helped yeah. raise my brothers. My parents didn't want to be parents. And so that's, that's, that's it. <laughs> I, this yeah. is why I do what I do. And I'm grateful that it came this way and that I, this is my mission. I'm like, oh yes. my gosh, all of it makes sense. Why I went through with what I went through so I can give that back. So this is beautiful. Okay, so there's two things. We mentioned um, Presently at Key, which is presentlyatkey.com. You can learn more about the website and um, the podcast and that community. But what we're talking about now, your online mindfulness school for children, and it's an eight-week program, is ourmindfulkids.com. And you just said you are putting together where you're going to have more of a prerequisite for the parents. And so it's more of a family uh, growth and work and all of these things, which is absolutely beautiful. But I have to ask you, I mean, as someone who doesn't have any kids, are you also going to create some classes, even if it's on demand, however, it may be um, for people that just want to learn it individually as an adult or even for um uh, people that are in roles that they're holding space for children, like teachers and 
this type of thing. Yes, thank you. So the prerequisite class is that class. I just okay. put that for the parents. So the workshop is called coming home to yourself hmm. because people are coming home to themselves for the first time, right? Yeah. Um, so that will be as, you know, for the families and people that have kids, you, that will be your prerequisite. But for the non-parents out there, that will just be that actually that workshop will be at presently at.com, not in our mindful kids. So okay. it'll have that separation. Uh, but for the parents who are interested, they will have to take it as before they do the family workshop. Um, but for the regular adults, it's, it's a four week program, um, an hour a week, and it'll be again one on one. Um, I was thinking of doing a group setting, but because it's so personal, coming home to yourself, that I really wanted to give that person the same the same space and love and intent that I give the children yeah because, you know from being in this space for so long the understanding there is that your inner child is wanting what I'm going to give you so it, it's important so it's it's still it's the adult one but I'm using it for the parents as well I hope that helps yeah, no, that's perfect. And I just want to ask you this too, for people who may not be as familiar with this work, you know, when we say, and we talk about this, like being present and having an awareness of, you know, how we are responding emotionally or what's going on in our mind and having these beautiful tools that help us to learn to manage how we are interacting with our entire system, really. Have you noticed, um, even in your own mindfulness work, is there a correlation between even healing some of the past? Because a lot of people are wondering, like, does this help perhaps with like my, my patterns that I'm already stuck in or old wounds or, you know, old relationship trauma, whatever it may be. Right. Can this type of work also support that type of healing? Yes. So I, I, I love mindfulness because I feel that mindfulness is the gateway drug to spirituality, which is your mm -hmm. ultimate relationship to your higher self. Right. Yeah. So it does, because once you start observing your patterns and your behavior, what ends up happening is that when you start to transition small things in your life, it, it could be minuscule and you your body starts to feel better. It's the body that's just always like, oh my God, that felt so good. I have not done that in a long time. Yeah. Or I haven't, I've never been in this space. Oh my God, I didn't have anxiety in my body today. <laughs> so what ends up happening is that you're going to crave more of that. And just naturally, because we've been so used to this. Yeah. And now you're like, oh, I can, I can relax. Like I don't have to be proactive and productive and, do something to feel worthy of love? No, you just have to be. And that, that acceptance, it starts, you, when you start learning about yourself, it's just you start loving yourself. And when you start loving yourself, you want more and better for yourself. So mm -hmm. then you'll end up either wanting to do, you know, there's so many healers, but there's also therapists. So we we'll reach out to somebody to go deeper into that space. And I'm happy to offer that as well, um, to go deeper, you know, for the person who is able to be in a sovereign space to do the work, because it's also internal work by yourself. Like, I won't be holding your hand. I'm just showing you where the water is and the ways that you could possibly grasp this water. You can have a cup, you can have a jug, you can make your this, you can, you know what I mean? So it's yeah. just showing you the way, but you have to do the work. So it, it's to inspire you to start loving yourself. And as you chip away at the ways that we weren't loving ourselves is why you'll start to shift your life. And, you know, there are side effects. You're going to end up losing toxic people, toxic patterns, toxic jobs, toxic partners. A lot of these things will end up falling away because they're not in alignment with who you're understanding who you are now and what you're deserving of. And so that's why mindfulness is also important because as these things start to fall away, we we'll start to grieve our, our old selves, right? And yeah. so it will help you to, to understand what's falling away and why and cherish for what that was. And then moving and then getting excited for what it's making room for. And that's the exciting part. It is very exciting, Claudia. And I'm thinking about how you know, a lot of us do come into this work as adults, 
and there may be a lot of people listening, of course, I'm sure I, I know <laughs> that are parents. And sometimes there can be a bit of frustration of wanting to share this with your children, but trying to share with them in the like way that we learned as an adult or from our very adult lens and not making adaptations for what would be more understandable for them in their experience at a younger age. So I think it's beautiful, one, that parents have this option to help their children learn mindfulness as well, especially in a non-biased environment where the child isn't going to feel pressured, um, yes. which we can often feel by our parents, no matter how well intended, right? So people can learn more about the mindfulness for kids, go to ourmindfulkids.com, and then also for the upcoming classes that will be for adults coming home to yourself. They'll go to the podcast website, presentlyaki.com. I'm going to have the link for both down in the show description and how to connect with you, all of these things. But one last thing I do want to ask you, my love, um, because in this work as well, there's so much that we learn in holding space for others. And a lot of the people that listen to the podcast, you know, it's there, they feel so inspired to be of service in any way that we can. So just curious, in this work, right, you went from being so observant in the um, service industry and um, really needing to know ahead of time, almost like predetermining what people may need or want, but feeling into that, being observant, and then you go on this whole journey for yourself and it's led you to children. What are some of the number one things that this work has taught you that you're so appreciative of, of how it's contributed to your life? Um, one, one big one that I'd never anticipated. I didn't even know that I, I could have my cup overflow. Uh. And the first time that ever happened, I, I'll never forget it because I finished, um, it was I was I was recording a session with a group of people and I was I was like, why do I feel like I want to cry? That's weird. OK, let's just cry. Let's just see where this goes. Because right? <laughs> that's what it's about. Right. Just I'm right. Gonna resist. So I'm home and I'm like crying and I'm like, what? OK, we're done. But I, oh, oh, I feel happy. I feel really grateful. Oh my cup is overflowing i i never had my cup overflow before ever. Oh. and that blew my mind because i was sad and happy at the same time like sad mm -hmm. that my cup was never overflowing my whole life and then happy that i found this discovery like oh my god i can't this is a thing you can't have your cup overflow and yeah. over and because of that space now i'm able to give more of myself and so with the kids every time I, I I give myself 30 minutes per class because I need a moment just yeah. to to take in the beauty that is them and the beauty mm. of the lesson that they gave me at the same time and I every class I find myself like after I'm like okay if I have to cry then I have to cry but we gotta <laughs> be good for the next kid because it is when we allow our children to be our teachers, they will remind us of why, what is, what are the things that fill our overflow our cup, yeah. right? Why did we forget that? Where did we forget that? So those, that's one, one thing I will never, I will never forget. And I will take that all the way to all the multiple lifetimes from here on, because that's something that I never anticipated ever ever um and then the second thing that i've learned is more about me i didn't know how intuitive i was i i didn't even know that i can create a safe space or even what that meant mm -hmm. especially online right because we're doing yeah. this and I, I even thought about that I'm like okay how am i gonna make them feel safe because i know that is the priority for kids safety how do I do that in a computer, right? So it must be like, you, you understand, as the Aquarian, <laughs> how do I do this? How do I break this down? So immediately my mind was like, okay, if I'm spiritual technology and this is technology, <laughs> you know where I'm going it. with this, yes. right? 
how do I how do I put my energy into this machine so when you wherever you are you're gonna feel me and yes. that's what happened yeah. and so I learned how to do that and you know you've been on my podcast I do that to everybody who comes on yeah and so that is another gift I was like wow I can do that and now I understand why people are so magnetically drawn to me because before in the past people be like oh you're you're so calm or every time I'm around you it's soothing or it's like this I'm like I don't I guess I don't know you know <laughs> and now I've learned so much about myself and my gifts that I didn't know at all I was not so tapped into them so I'm also so grateful for knowing myself even deeper um, and then <laughs> another one is just I'm passionate about mindfulness but this has up the kick to I don't know what the word beyond passion is because mm -hmm. what I've learned through other masters is one thing that I took away from them is just through time when you keep practicing this mindfulness and you start coming home to yourself even more so and then you start to surrender into the flow of life and so you start to dance but what happens is that you don't have to go looking to, to go meditate because life will become the meditation. Yeah. And that's no, right. that is so beautiful and really, I mean, profound. And it's funny because I'm sure a lot of people who are in practice, you probably just made their minds go like, oh, yes, I've never thought of it that way. But it's very Aquarian of you to talk about your spiritual technology and how do I get them to feel <laughs> me over there through the through the machine. Um, I have to tell you, Claudia. You know, one of the things that you said that really struck me was about your cup overflowing mm. and just even the way that you expressed it. It's like, I could really feel it. And it reminded me of, and I had never thought about it in this way before, but coming into this work at, as well, a lot of my like walls and boundaries and, you know, all of the things I had built up around me to self-protect, right? So we build up a lot of these barriers as protection to keep away the hurt but not realizing that those same walls often keep us so separated from deep profound joy Absolutely. and so it's really beautiful seeing you um express that and have that consideration of you know don't try to be so in fear that you keep out the joy too yes yes definitely and and i would say that would be number four is vulnerability learning that yeah. because as a new yorker you know, you've got walls all day. You're like defensive. You're ready to fight, fight or flight 24 seven. And right. when you leave that, you're like, oh my God, it's so exhausting. Yeah. I don't have to be like that. So, you know, letting that go, like exactly what you said about those walls, keeping other things out that when I started to become more vulnerable with other people, I I'm also inspiring them to do the same because they feel like I used to feel. Like, I don't, yeah. I don't know, because people take advantage, people do. But if I'm holding my truest self, and if you're going to want to take advantage, well, I'm going to see it, right? right? I'm already so in, at home with myself that when someone, you know, when you, you know, as the energetic alchemist, when a lower vibration wants to come into your field, you're like, no, actually, and you know how to set boundaries and know how to protect that heart and the vulnerability and still be open. Yeah. And what you're saying, I mean, it really points to those gifts of being an empath, learning that instead of being in fear of or doubting yourself, or even, I think you mentioned something earlier too, of like, you know, just like not wanting to be rude. And yeah. so we will ignore what we genuinely feel. So I, I, so much of what you're saying, this work, it does help us to learn how to use the gifts of being empathic, very, um, in beautiful ways, but what you just said too really emphasizes the trust of ourselves that comes. And that is so crucial. Like, I, I don't think we even realize how much we don't trust ourselves, but this work definitely will like put yes. that screaming in your face, yes. how necessary it is. It is. Cause I'm a big advocate. I'm like, tell people, I'm like, stop externalizing yourself. Yeah. Stop looking for, for you outside of you. It's right mm -hmm. here. Yeah. And that's why, you know, I, I love, it. for some people, you know, obviously the pandemic wasn't great, but I do love that space because now all of us as healers, I know you've been in this space for quite some time, but now everyone is more open. The collective is more yeah. open to want to heal themselves. And how right. do I, I'm seeing that these patterns or things that I'm doing, it's not working. It's not doing me any good or bringing me happiness. So it's just, it's a beautiful space to 
to come home to yourself and understand like, oh, it's okay to not do those things. It's okay to release these aspects and, and stop um, externalizing also guilt and fault on others because, you know, we are projections of each other. We are each other. You know, there are no dividing lines. And so when you start seeing everyone outside of yourself as yourself, your empathy and compassion will grow exponentially because there won't be judgment. And if you don't have judgment on others, then you don't have judgment on yourself. Isn't it amazing? And it all comes right back, all comes right back around. And I have to tell you um, how much one, just for everyone listening, it was a joy being on your podcast. You really do hold beautiful space and um, you are great at asking questions and getting people to share from a space that will be very helpful and beneficial to anyone listening. So I really do recommend that everyone checks out your podcast presently at Key with Claudia. You can also find her on Instagram as well. And I know you um, post even clips from the different interviews and yeah, I mean, you do have beautiful conversations, but definitely aside from um, the mindfulness that will support us as adults, if you have children, I mean, even, you know, people with children, your nieces and nephews, whomever it may be. I also recommend going to Claudia's website, our mindful And I want to thank you so much for taking the time to share all of your beautiful work with us today, my love. Thank you so much for you holding the space for me and me feeling safe enough to share. So thank you so much. I, I can feel you. I, I am just in deep gratitude to be in your podcast and, and have your listeners. Also, I acknowledge that there are other types of ways of healing mm-hmm. and, um, you know, highlighting that aspect. And so thank you so much. And yes, um, definitely check out if you have any questions. Don't hesitate. I also do Mindful Mondays on Instagram Live. Yes. Um, <laughs> and so that's a new thing just to give people practicality of their everyday. Right. So yeah. um, thank you again. So, so great. And- what is your handle on Instagram so they can follow you yes. right now? <laughs> yes, right now. So it's presently aquí. And for everyone who is unaware, aquí means here in Spanish because I'm a Hispanic heritage. So it's presently here, but because I'm Spanish, presently aquí is A-Q-U-I. So my handle is presently aquí. Yeah, no, it's perfect. It's funny when I saw the name of it and considering the work that you do, I was like, oh, that's a brilliant brilliant business name <laughs> thank you the That's, spirit, yeah. spirit and i collaborated <laughs> i yeah. sat on my balcony for hours like okay what is it gonna be and and play of words and when it clicked you know you know when and you know and that was that was perfect yeah no, it's so true it is so true and just as much as you feel and are, are observant i hope you know how much your energy is felt as well And I hope that you all enjoyed this conversation meeting Claudia today. Don't forget to click on the links below, check out her work, sign yourself up for the mindfulness training and follow her on Instagram at presently Aki. And we will see you next time. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye. Okay, first of all, I want to say thank you so much to Claudia for coming to share her work with us today. Don't forget, if you want to learn more about her work and her online mindfulness school, visit her website, OurMindfulKids.com. And um, don't forget to check out her podcast, which is called Presently Aki with Claudia. And I just want to thank you again, Claudia, for coming to share and inspire through the work that you are providing. I also want to remind you, beautiful alchemist, go to my website, theenergeticalchemist.com, download the app, register for the upcoming class, and make sure you sign up for the newsletter so you get access to Creating with the Moon and Stars, as well as 22 Days of Transformation. I hope that you all have a gorgeous day, and remember to always journey in love.